we decided to come up with a woodworking project based upon a lot of interest on uh, Pinterest uh, for an item and it turns out it's an item that we could actually use ourselves at, um, for a porch sign that we plan to be building and as long as we're building a sign we might as well put some storage behind it. So I'm going to import the item. It's a plow and hearth um, wall mount. I think they call it a cabinet. Um, so this relatively straightforward flip down cabinet from plow and hearth. You can see right here, no longer for sale. And it was one of the, I believe, top 10 items on Pinterest for, for a little bit of time, top 10 shares. Um, so we're going to do a wood plan so that others can build the same thing. The dimensions on the cabinet are um, on the plow and hearth one you can see 32 and 3 quarters, 10 inches deep which surprised me a little bit and then 21 and 3 quarter inches high. Um, we're going to do it a simple 3 foot by 2 foot to meet meet our needs, so 3 foot wide, 2 feet high. And uh, the depth, we're going to make it simple so that people can go to the store and just buy a dimensional 1 by 6 and um, have minimal cutting. So the depth isn't going to be um, great for some, but um, but again, it's going to be an easier project to build, and it's a simple change to just go with a, a 1 by 8 or a 1 by 10 for the cabinet portion of the plan. So back to the SketchUp plan. We're going to set our drawing here and uh, give you some idea of what we're what we're looking at, and this will give us a visual while we're laying out our actual plan. So. Let's go ahead, we're going to start with the shape itself, and again we're going to do a 2 foot by 3 foot rectangle. And if you look in the lower left on SketchUp, you'll see the dimensions. Um, it's going to go the width by the height. Um, when you lay out a box, I just selected the box tool and lay that out, and then let go. Um, it's still selected. You can just type the dimensions. So the first is a width, I'll just type 36, and my setup has it defaulting to inches, so you don't have to type the inch mark. Uh, so 36, comma, and then the height, 24, and hit enter. You'll see the box jump to 36 by 24. Um, now what we then want to do is offset the box. So select your offset tool, and then get on the edge of the item, and then drag it in. We know that we want our, our finished outside dimensions to be 36 by 24, so we're going to move in on this. Um, and again, we want to offset it by 3 quarter. That's the dimension of the lumber. So you can type 3 forward slash 4 or 0.75. You'll see me do, do one or the other throughout this. Um, and that'll set your offset. So again, type, type 0.75 and hit enter. And so now our offset is 3 quarters of an inch. Now I'm going to select the intersection, and I've just deleted the back from our item. So now we know that, um, that we're using 1 by 6. And so that's a dimensional lumber. It's not a true six inches. So we will go and look at the dimensional lumber chart and see that a, a one by six is actually five and a half inches, and of course three quarter inches thick. Um, if people wonder why that why that's the case, and a one by six is what it was before it was smoothed out and planed down, and uh, it's the sides were joined up. So if you were to buy this as raw lumber, it would be truly one by six. Okay, so we know that we need this to be five and a half tall so that we don't have much cutting. So select your push-pull tool. You'll see that the, the dots appear when you're over the item. Click once and then just lift up. And then again, it's like anything else, you enter your dimensions. So I will just type 5.5 and hit enter. And so now I have something that's uh, five and a half inches, just like that. So obviously it's not um, laid out with the lines. We're, we we want to show the seams here. For this project, we're just going to be using butt joints, and so we can go ahead and uh, dr simply draw the lines in in SketchUp, and SketchUp is bright enough to understand that separation. And we can also flip it over to make sure we don't have any 
surprise is if you don't do both sides of an object down the line you'll see that it'll probably cause an issue whether it be with painting or putting a finish on something um, but if you forget to do something like that it can cause an issue down the line for you okay so now we have our two foot by three foot box and we now need to find the center line there are different ways to do it we're just going to measure it to show you the easy way or I guess the hard way seven so 34 and a half is our total dimension so we know that 17 and a quarter would be uh, where we want the center line to be so we'll just drag this over and then as with anything in SketchUp you just type your dimensions so I'll go 17 and the quarter or 17.25 so there we have a guideline at 17.25 now it looks crooked just because that's the perspective that you're seeing um, it's really not it's really a straight line so there so what I want to do here is I'm going to draw my rectangle and I'm using again three quarter inch lumber one by dimensional lumber um, so I can just type um, half of three quarters three eighths so three eighths comma five point five and now there's probably an easier way to do this but uh, I find this not too difficult I know I need to move this line over another three eighths of an inch so I will just pull type 3 8 enter and now I have my 3 quarter inch center lined uh, piece now I'll get my push pull tool and you'll see I can just drag down this piece and place it on the face on the cross piece and then remember you have to separate it so that it is a separate piece of material so we'll go to the underside and make sure to separate and of course what we dragged it to where we butted up against it that it automatically uh, has a separation there because we just butted up to it now the inside height um, if you look at the drawing that we have here the inside height will you know could vary based on how you're going to use it so for me I'm gonna go just about halfway it doesn't have to be perfect this can this can vary if you want to get tricky you could make it with shelf supports in there so that you could remove that shelf or adjust that shelf um, we're just going to put it at a fixed height for now so I'm just going to go up let's say 10 inches because I know my total dimension on it I think it's 22 and a half yeah I'm going to go up 10 and then I'm going to set a three quarter inch board on top of that so I know that if I go three quarter comma 5.5 remember it's 5.5 from here to here so if I go 3 quarter 5.5 enter that's our 3 quarter inch board or shelf Ooh. my placement here makes it a little difficult to navigate around or to to orbit around my object okay so now I grab my push pull tool select that little piece that I created and drag it all the way over and then I do want to separate it I find that these guides at a certain point if you draw quite a few of the guides they're going to uh, get in the way there's a simple way to do that just delete guides unless you need them of course so now I have our basic f uh, our basic framework and again because of my placement my orbit tool is a little tricky to use so I have the basic outline of this so we also want to add this upper piece and um, it's really just like an apron that we um, are going to create so let's go ahead and look straight down at it you could do this all different ways you can draw it with lines you could draw rectangles um, what I'm going to do is just uh, offset and then I'll do some erasing so let's use our offset tool again we're going to go three quarters hit enter and then I'm gonna uh, set it back just uh, three quarters of an inch from the face of the piece so when I draw these lines you see it snaps to the right position I can then erase this center line and now I have this apron piece now if I use a piece of one by two lumber 
the nice thing is, again, a 1 by 2 will be 1 and a half inch finished. So I will raise this up, just type 1.5 and hit enter. So there's my 1 and a half inch apron. Now your apron pieces, um, depending on how you make them, you could have a dividing line here or you could have your dividing line here. I'll just have my end pieces a little larger and I'm going to make it so that uh, my piece is divided at that point. Okay. So now in the picture you'll notice that they have a nice little um, curved detail on the end. Little details really make a difference in a wood project. Um, the subtle things when you round over an edge, when you um, soften a corner, it makes a big, big difference. Here's something that we forgot to do. I have to separate these one by twos from the from the main piece. Okay, so now we have our separated pieces. There are different ways we can achieve our, our arc. Um, I would kind of do it freehand. Uh, again, if you look at the photo, um, it has this, this nice little detail. It's set back about two inches, so a little step detail. Okay, so for the arc, we're going to freehand that little end piece that you see in the drawing. They have a nice curve followed by another curve. Theirs looks fairly straightforward. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll chop out a section first that's about, let's say, um, three quarter by one half inch. Okay. So now to get rid of that, use your push tool. You push it to its, let's zoom in to get some control, furthest extent. It'll say the offset's limited to three quarters. When I click um, click on the left mouse button again, it'll, it'll delete that entire chunk. So now we have that chunk gone. You could simply leave it as this and then just manually round over your piece. Obviously what you do for, with your piece can vary. Um, we're just gonna try and get a decent looking arc in um, in our design here. So let's say we wish to just do a simple round over on this on this piece. So we're just going to do that round over. We'll leave that as a flat. And then again, we're going to do another, just a radius, or just a little knockdown on the corner so it's not so sharp. OK, so once I have those cut out, I'm going to, again, use the push pull, pull tool as we did before. It'll be a little more obvious when I do it this way. There. And we have our points. Now you might wish to do something a little bit different, but for, for our purposes, this, this will be fine. Here's one of the great things about SketchUp. We need to recreate that on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is copy the shape Go to the other side and then paste our shape along the corner in place. Now I can use my push pull tool. I just deselect that piece, just hit escape. Push pull tool and do the same thing that we did on the other side to get rid of it. There you go. You've got two radiuses in place that were 
pretty simple to uh, pretty simple to lay out. So let's back out, take a look at our piece, and we are getting fairly close. So the other element I want to want to build is the front. Now um, clearances between the top and bottom and my face will partly depend on um, the hardware I use, the hinges. Some hinges might require a, a half inch or three eighths inch clearance where another hinge like a piano hinge might only require about a three sixteenths. Um, we're gonna assume we're using a stainless piano hinge on this. Um, you could use anything. You can get some really decorative pieces as well. So we are just going to measure this One thing that we didn't take into account is the um, fact that the, the face of the piece sets in flush with the upper shelf and flush with the lower shelf. So what we need to accomplish that, the sides, the centerpiece, and the shelf need to be three quarters of an inch less in size in, in width than the five and a half inch wide top and five and a half inch wide bottom. So what we'll do is use our push-pull tool get on the face, push it back, and then just do the three quarters. So 0.75 and hit enter. Do the same thing on these four pieces. 0.75, hit enter. Same thing. Whoops. <laughs> Select the right area. You can see you can do this and you can type in the 0.75 or three quarters and uh, hit enter. Or you could just go to something that you know is the dimension you need it to be. When you touch the face of it, this piece over here will lock to that face position. So I'll do the same over here and again it just locks it in place. So now I have my three quarter inch setback um, that's required not required that we want for the look of our piece. Now we'll do a little bit of cleanup here to really represent the boards that we have. and then same thing on the lower. Get rid of the lines that won't truly exist in our piece. Okay, so now that we have the primary cabinet and we know that we're going to make a face for it that we believe is um, going to have a gap for our hinge of about 3 16 and um, an upper gap we need to see what the what the measurement is that we need to fill so let's assume we are uh, 3 16 and 3 16 on each side so I believe we're still 22 and a half yeah, we're 22 and a half there. So if we go 3 16 and 3 16 that gives us 3 8 So we need to be 22 and 1 8 in that direction, and we need to be 36 across. We're just going to simply go 36 across, comma, 22 and 1 8 and enter. So there's our, there's our face piece. Now it's going to be a three-quarter inch face. Let's just pop it up three quarters, 0.75, and hit enter. And now, obviously, we have our face piece. Now you can make this out of whatever you choose to. We're going to use a mahogany for this um, cabinet itself, and we're going to use um, mahogany plank for this plan. Okay, so for the face, let's uh, let's my our planks are going to run horizontally in this plan. You can see in here, it looks like they did a face frame with some diagonals. We're not going to get that tricky. We're going to try and keep this simple. And if you can see in the plan, they have these, um, looks like one by ones, that act uh, as a couple of different things. They butt up to the bottom to help hold the shelf in position along with the chains. And then also, they act as a stop so that the shelf doesn't go in beyond uh, the face of the item. It's not going to smack into to the shelf or anything inside. So that I should say the face, when it folds up, it just bumps into that upper shelf. 
on the sides you can see that little hanging piece is a clasp that just flips over and hooks into this little eye hook or clasp um, piece. They have these on both sides. You obviously want to use something that's brass or um, something that's water water resistant or isn't going to rust or, or tarnish. So whatever you can find at the hardware store that will work. You get the chain kit. They seem to have maybe mortises in, but you can get just a surface mount piece. Um, I have seen people use uh, little cable strapping. Um, that's pretty common, and in that case, they usually mount it on the outside. Mounting on the outside will be easier. It doesn't get in the way of the inside. It doesn't knock anything over. Um, that's just your call, but make sure it's something sturdy and mounted well. Um, yeah, let's go four that are that are five inches wide. So in SketchUp, SketchUp is such a great tool. We can take and select an item. Um, we'll select the end piece. Use our move tool. We're going to hold this is on a PC. Hold our control key down. You see that plus sign appear? We're now going to drag this piece all the way over to a furthest extent where we want it to be. Right there. Click once. Now don't do anything in terms of selecting anything else. Type forward slash four because we're going to divide this four times and then enter. So it automatically knows how to divide this up to give you the exact dimension you need. Now if you measure this we should get five and I think one thirty second or so. So let's give this a try. Interesting. Five and seventeen thirty seconds. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, you know, okay, that makes sense. My math was off on this. So we needed, I was uh, doing the math at 20 inches. We need 22 inches. It's 22 and an eighth. So our five, uh, five and a half inch boards work perfectly. Um, you could just gap them slightly, literally stick a toothpick in between them before you join these together. Or you could butt them up and just have a little extra gapping at the top, literally like an eighth inch extra. So um, however you choose to do it, you can do it. So it's nice that we don't have to rip these pieces. So if I mentioned ripping them earlier, you do not need to do that. So let's take a look at what we have here. See the underside, it didn't do that division. We, we could, um, but for now we're fine. Now in our finished project, you see these cross pieces, and they're very close to the end. Um, we could do the same. You could really do whatever works for you. If your boards are a little wavy or wonky, um, you may want to put a third cross piece here. Um, I'm going to use some 1x2. I'm going to assume I have extra 1x2 from that piece up top. Remember we did the 1x2 top apron. So let's take the 1x2. I'm going to go in, let's just call it, uh, we'll just pick 4 inches. A lot of this stuff is just not set in stone. So we're just going to draw a guide by going to the end piece and dragging over with our with our measuring tape. Hit 4 and you'll see that jump over to 4 inches. Do the same at the opposite end. And then we will just draw in a 1 by 2. And remember, a 1 by 2 is 1 and a half inches. So we go 1.5 and then 22 and 1 eighth. And remember, there is an overhang on this, but we'll do that, uh, we'll do that next. I'm going to extend it down, this little overhang, so it butts up when the piece closes. So again, let's do a 1 by 2. We'll keep it consistent and go to the outside of that 4 inch line. So remember 1.5, comma, 22 and 1 eighth, enter. So now we have those pieces. Now since this is a continuous piece, we're going to erase these lines. We could raise it up to the correct um, thickness, 3 quarter, but those lines are going to get in the way when we raise it up. So let's erase them now. If you ever have trouble with the accuracy of the race tool, just zoom in a little bit and you'll be able to be able to get it. Okay, so now we have something that we can use our push pull tool and raise up. And again it's a three quarter inch piece. Do the same over here. Three quarter inch piece. Um, it's interesting that it has those lines there. We'll get rid of those just to be safe in terms of alterations in the future. Let's break those up. 
And then again, let's erase those little side markers. Whoops. <laughs> you can see if you uh, get sloppy with the eraser tool. You can always undo. Go to the undo menu and you can just uh, uh, hit Control Z to back up or you can go to this edit and then undo the actual um, undo the actual what the actual tool did but just remember in most programs control Z to undo what you just did so I need to erase from the other side and then I need to clean up the end by separating with a simple line here. Okay. Now remember, in our piece, this extends at the top high enough to butt into the upper shelf. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We are just going to extend it three-quarter. That way there's no possibility that it will go higher than that upper shelf. It will probably fall lower because of the spacing that we're using. Um, if it is an issue, you can always adjust it, but let's just go out three quarters. And again, just type 0.75, hit enter, and it jumps to the spot. And then the same thing with this, we can hit 0.75 and enter, or we can just run over to here and line it up just by touching that piece. So then that'll bring that out three quarters. So there's our front. So we could literally count what pieces we need here. Um, we are going to have to rip one, two, three, four pieces, but the rest of the material is dimensional, which is nice. So we have uh, one by sixes and then one by twos. Now, if your lumber store doesn't sell one by twos in the material that you're using, obviously you'll have to rip something additional. And then you could just use a jigsaw to cut whatever design you choose to at the end. You might not want a design at all. You just knock it down with a piece of sandpaper, but definitely soften that edge up somehow. Um, the chains will need to connect, so you can get the hardware pieces at your local Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and a piano hinge that won't rust. Make sure you get something that's um, good to be exposed to the elements. Um, here's one thing in SketchUp that we'll do. Let's say you wanted to move this over and put it on top of your piece. You get your move tool and you realize, whoops, can't do that. So what you want to do is select All Connected, and that's going to select this entire piece. And I just right click to pull up that menu. Now right click it again and you could make this a group. So now we can move these as a group. I'm going to get down to the corner that I want to control which is this inside corner here. And then I'm gonna, now I'm not in a good position but let's get there. Actually, it is. That worked out. So I'm just going to move this out of my way. Remember, there's that gap for the hinge. I'm going to assume it's uh, 3 16 So I will give myself a guideline at 3 16 of an inch. And now when I go to the Move tool and select this corner, don't select this upper corner because I don't want to snap to this no matter what select the piece that's going to butt up to your guideline. And you can see it'll want to snap to that guideline. So I have my little 3 16 inch gap that my hinge will go in. And then you'll see there's there's an equal gap at the top. And then our top pieces do not go higher than that upper shelf. There's a little space there. You can extend them, you can shave them down, whatever you choose to. Um, this one should be flush with the bottom though, because what it will do when this piece is folded open is these will butt against the bottom and actually help support the piece along with the chains. So there you have it, a uh, simple wall shelf similar to the plow and hearth, plow and hearth fold down cabinet. 
Um, you'll need to mount this to your wall somehow. There are different ways you can do that. You may want to put a cleat underneath. You may want to add cleats on the inside. Um, you may want to do hangers um, in a different way. You could you know, hang it as if you were hanging a picture. That's not going to be secure. So just do something that's safe. Some people would just blow a hole right through the apron up top and screw straight in. Um, but do whatever works for you in terms of where you're going to mount the piece. And you should have extra material to be able to create a little cleat on the top or a little ledge down at the bottom to screw into and or support the piece vertically. Thank you for watching.